Hello. Hello. Tom, welcome back to action. Um, first one, I want to start with, you saw Tabura earlier this week and immediately asked him why he wasn't fat anymore. Were you surprised that he was a bit more svelte coming into fight week? I think he's still got that skinny fat thing going though. I think he might be hiding a little belly under there. No, he looks in good shape. He looks in good shape, to be honest with you. I think it's a big fight for him. It's a big fight for me as well, obviously. And we've both trained hard for it by the looks of things. And um, you can tell with his physique. Yeah. I feel like this is a commentary on your ability as well, but a lot of people are counting him out. They're not really giving him a lot of chance. For the outsiders that don't appreciate it, what does he do well that we don't realize? He does a lot of things well, and I don't think... I don't understand why people are counting him out because he's won seven of his last eight in the rankings as a heavyweight that's a pretty good record mate if you ask me and he's very durable he doesn't quit which is pretty rare for a heavyweight usually when heavyweights start to get a little bit tired they start to uh, look for a way out and he definitely doesn't he's got loads and loads of experience and i've took him extremely extremely seriously you mentioned he doesn't want to. He doesn't like to quit and go away. Are you sort of expecting to be the guy that can put him out and show that you are maybe a bit levels above? Yes. How excited are you for Sunday morning to not be asked about your knee again? Oh, mate, I can't wait to never be asked about my knee again. That's going to be excellent. Um, I'm going to be moving around in there nice on Saturday night and show everyone that we are at full health and... Everything's recovered, mate. I feel good. I feel great. And yeah, I'm fucking sick of talking about the knee, mate, to be honest with you. Are you still going by Tommy Two Legs or did Bispin call No, you? Bispin put me off when he called me a paedophile. So um, uh, do it. I, I want to stay away from that uh, that register, that sex offender, <laughs> offenders register. I don't want to be linked to that at all. So staying away from that, mate. Good career choice. Uh, if you could win this fight by Gogo Plata, running knee or flying arm triangle, how would you win it? Uh, probably run, running knee. The others, yeah, heavyweights aren't doing the others, so yeah, that, that suits me. Your old mate Tyson Fury is fighting Francis Ngannou soon. Um, what are your thoughts on that fight, and how do you see Tyson and Francis matching up? I think Ngannou's got a puncher's chance, but it's a very, 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 very small puncher's chance, very slim chance. As someone who has sparred Tyson a lot and seen Tyson up close sparring a lot and seen him fight up close, I think that someone with the inexperience of someone like Francis Ngannou, it's going to be really tough. Obviously, he punches like an absolute truck. And if you put Francis Ngannou in there with anybody and tell him that he's allowed to punch him, he's got a chance against anybody. But Tyson Fury is a master of what he does and... Um, it's going to be a tough night for Ngannou, I think. Have you spoke to Tyson about the fight? Yeah, I spoke to him. He called me the other day. He asked if I'll help him with training and stuff. So we'll see how it goes, mate. We'll see how it all goes. You know, I've got a busy schedule myself. So uh, we'll be in touch again after my fight's over with. Last one for me. You know, last time you did this and the knee and everything kind of blew up. How excited are you to go out there on Saturday and hear no, 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 no again? I'm excited for that. I can't wait for that. Um, I just want to fight again, mate. I'm really happy, actually, this time. I'm just... I've missed it more than I realised until I actually got to fight week. Like, I'm really, really happy to be here, really grateful to be here, and I'm looking forward to it, mate. Can't wait. Tom, over to your left. No one wants to be on an injury layoff, but were there benefits to being off for that length of time in terms of progressing your game? finally sort of tuning your skills for this upcoming fight? I mean, it gives me a lot of time to get everything right in my life. Before, I don't know, I think I'm kind of a superstitious guy and if, if everything's going well, I don't really want to change stuff even if I know it's wrong, if that makes any kind of sense. Like, well, that made sense to me before, but um, I feel like I've really changed a lot inside and outside of the gym, inside and outside of fighting, and... I think that this time has given me loads of chance to work with loads of good heavyweights in training, make sure that my body's looked after and good, make sure that I'm well rested and that I'm in a good place mentally. And Mate, I can sit up here all day and talk about it, how good I am, but ultimately I have to show it on Saturday and that's what I intend on doing. We had Molly McCann in here earlier and she was talking about how her career was going at like 100 miles an hour, then she had a setback. 
and now she feels a lot a lot calmer and things seem to be uh, coming at her at a slightly slower speed. She's seeing things a lot better now. Is that is that going to be a similar case with yourself? Do you think? Um, I don't know. It's just it's just a fight, mate. To me, it's I'm going in there fighting with someone, and it's irrelevant as to what pressures on me and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going in there to to do a sport, and I just look forward to that. Looking to make a big statement, get a big win this weekend. Heavyweight division is absolutely wide open. There's a, a, a clutch of contenders who are all about to be in, in big matchups coming up. Obviously, there's yourself. Who else in that heavyweight division would you say are the most, the most dangerous contenders who you might have to face before you get There's absolutely on? loads, mate. There's loads. Um, I don't really want to miss anyone off, but the ones who stand out are like, obviously, this Pavlovich who's ranked number one at the moment. He's like on paper the number one contender. Um, you got loads of dangerous guys, mate. I, like obviously the Sirogan, Spivak fighting. There's um, two of us fighting uh, Volkov. Like these are all fight. Obviously there's Almeida and Blades. Fight. Like these guys are good, mate. This, it's not like it's not like ten years ago when they're all old fat heavyweights who were just standing there punching each other. These are like guys who are not even in the prime yet. So I think we got an exciting ten years ahead of us um, in the heavyweight division. It's going to be a great time. And how far off from a title fight do you think a big win, a big stoppage win this weekend will, will put you? Well, heavyweight, heavyweight MMA kind of has its own rules, in my opinion. Um, if I'm like rank number five and I fight rank number 10, which is what ha what's happening, and I lie on him for five rounds and it's a boring fight, it's not really going to move me up at all. But if I go out there and knock him out in 30 seconds with some crazy spinning elbow, like that's going to put me as a number one contender. And that's just the way it works, mate. It doesn't always come down to rankings. It's like impressive performances. So it all depends on how the fight goes Saturday. What, what kind of finish am I going to get? What kind of win am I going to get? How the fight's going to go? Um, I, I don't know. We'll just see. Last one from me. Um, when you've spoken to us in the past and you've talked about wanting to fight John Jones one day, but back then you said you weren't ready. Do you think you're ready now? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Just to go off the back of that, um, John Jones is going to be fighting Sipo Miocic. Uh, what do you think about that matchup? How do you think it goes down? I think it's interesting. I think uh, it's difficult to pick a winner, really, because Stipe now is getting a little bit long in the tooth, I would say. He's got a lot of miles on the clock, and he hasn't fought for like two or three years now and that's going to be difficult oscar can you move your head please i can't see the lady behind you thank you um he's just getting his head in the way he's very rude um and yeah i think it, i think it's difficult to know where steve is at at this point whereas john jones we know exactly where he's at he's just had a great performance so it's heavyweight mma you can never say exactly what's going to happen at obviously the the highest level but i would say that John Jones has the edge, definitely. And do you see John Jones sticking around for much longer after that fight? I hope so. Like, that's my dream fight. My goal in the future moving forward is not only to win, but, like, I want to excite John Jones. Like, I want him to look at me and think... I, I keep saying it in interviews and stuff, but at this point, he probably doesn't know who I am. He probably doesn't, and, I, like, that's fine. But I want him to watch me fight in the next few fights and think, I need to stick around for this guy. Like, this guy deserves... I need to test, I want him to look at me and think, I need to test myself against this guy and, and be excited about guys like me coming through and, and want to take that challenge. How do you see yourself matching up with John Jones? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Tom, um, when you're uh, doing the job that you love to do, obviously it's, it's an amazing thing, it's an amazing feeling, but when that opportunity is then taken away from you, whether it be through injury or other things, it can be a really difficult thing for your mental health. How did you find this last year in terms of mentally not being able to do that job that you love to do? I found it pretty difficult, mate, to be honest. Um, after a couple of months, I was all right, maybe less. It, the, the toughest bit was not being able to walk for me. And like you say, at first I was like, I didn't know how long I was going to be out for. It's, it's all right. Even like losing a fight, mate, say, say I got knocked out or I lost a points decision or whatever. You know that in three months you're going to get another crack at it. Whereas with me, it was like, I didn't know when I was going to be able to train again. Didn't know when I was going to be able to fight again. And 
it was a tough time, mate. Mentally, it, it, it's really a tough thing to suffer an injury in front of millions of people and and be sat at home on your own, unable to walk. Like that's quite tough. Was there anything that? was a, a springboard for you to kind of start feeling better about it or was it simply once your body started healing your mind started feeling better once i was able to do the start the rehab process and stuff i was all right because i just treat I literally treated it like a training camp the getting back to getting my knee right and my physio he'd always give me like two week goals so it'd always be like right in two weeks you're gonna you need to be doing this so it always like give me something to look forward to and stuff so um i really had great people around me to help me get back to where i am and i really kept everything good in terms of uh what i was putting in my body the rest i was taking like i didn't i think you can tell from my physique now that i didn't just get fat over the time that i was away like i took everything really serious mate i took the i probably took honestly the rehab process more serious than i've taken any training camp and i'm not even joking like i put all good stuff in my body took the right rest hypnotherapy like i did everything to get back better than when i left thanks very much mate. Thanks, best mate. of luck just down there, sorry. Um, I know you said that you don't want to speak about the, the knee injury too much and you're kind of sick of speaking about it, um, but you're already known as being one of the most athletic fighters across any weight class. Do you think that there's going to be a bit of surprise from the people to see how, how different you look post-surgery? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, well, the, the close people to me know that I was getting through these training camps and fights, mate, with one leg. And that's not over exaggerating. So I think me with two legs is definitely has a lot more to offer than me with one leg. So I, I think it will surprise a few people the way I move around the octagon on Saturday. Does that obviously include your kicking game? I'm guessing um, that's something that's evolved over the... Yeah, not just kicking though. There's all kinds of stuff that there's certain movements I couldn't do. I couldn't grapple for too long, like... I was barely grappling at all before. Like I would be on my leg for, I would be on my knees for half an hour. I'd have to stop training because my knee would be swollen. So uh, that's gone. And I've done some great, great training with great heavyweights for the full camp. It's not been like we've had the odd heavyweight. Every single day, mate, I've got heavyweights to train with, which is pretty rare thing. So I'm really happy about that. And how my body feels responding to that as well. And I know you mentioned it there about the, the physio and how seriously you took that. Um, you mentioned that during that time you were you were asked to you were asking your physio to set you goals for you to to hit. How important do you think that was f to do that during the the recovery? And well, me personally, I need a goal. Otherwise, I'm just like treading water. It's just boring, and that's when I do start getting a bit down in the dumps. And that when when I'm just stuck doing nothing with it, like aimlessly going through life. I don't really like that stuff. Like I need something to work towards. So. It's very important for me. Thank you. Thanks, mate.